so we have the Fiverr set up ready to go now let's go to register page and start uh, writing our registration form okay so the way it's going to work is if you quickly go here in the finished project so when the user wants to register we will ask them to enter the email address and when they enter the email address we will send a confirmation link to their email because we don't want to register any user if they type whatever email that doesn't exist then we don't want to uh, save that user in the database so that's why we're going to send the confirmation email to make sure they are using the valid email address all right so they will enter the valid email address hit register we will email them the link all right so that link later when they click on that link uh, they will be redirected to some other page and where we will ask them to enter the password and that's how registration step will complete so that means when we um, when user fill out this form we will send the email and at the same time this user's email we will save in the local storage so when they come after clicking on the email uh, they will land on another page so on, on that page we will uh, fetch that user's email from the local storage and pre-populate in the form so that they just have to enter the password and they can uh, complete registration all right so that's how it works so you can try react node at gmail.com user will send an email um, fill out the form like this during registration you can even check the local storage so open the console here and click on the application go to the local storage okay you can see the current domain name here i okay, it's a card let's get rid of the items from the card so it's empty at the moment local storage for this site okay but if user uh, submit the register request okay you can see we send the confirmation email and at the same time we save this email the user's email by the key email for registration so this key we will uh, use on another page when user click on the email link and land on the another page like a register complete slash some uh, privacy code will be there so when they land on that page we will fetch this email from the local storage pre-populate in the form so they have to only enter the password and they're done all right so let's work on this one let's go back to our project here so go to register and first we're going to just create a form registration form all right so here let me start the server okay let me close this close this and go to register pages auth register and here let's create a form right registration form so div with a class name let's use a class name of container so i'm using bootstrap class name i'm sure you're familiar with bootstrap even if you're not it's a uh, quite simple you know it's just uh, the basic class names and you can always visit the bootstrap documentation if you want to learn more about the class names but they very easy to pick up so container and then padding five so this way you can use padding one to five that will add the padding on this div all right so we got the container let's create a div with the row so it, when you create a container you create a row inside the container and inside this row you can create many columns so altogether there has to be 12 column so you can create two column by six six altogether 12 so that will be a two column in the page web page so if you uh, create uh, column four then that has to be three four times three altogether 12 so row has to be um, altogether of 12 column all right So class name of row i'm going to create a div with class name of column medium six and um, i want to have the um, column medium six in the middle and on the both side i want to have nothing okay so i can use offset for that offset md3 
Okay, and you can see I'm using the Emmet plugin E double M E T. I think it might work um, with VS Code by default. If not, you can always install that plugin called Emmet. All right. So I'll create another div here like so, and then here I can write something like let me use H4 register. And here I'm going to show the register form. Okay, let's quickly have a look. All right, looks good. So let's create this form now. Instead of writing everything here, you can also write in a separate function and execute that function here. That way, things become quite um, easier to work with. Okay, so it will be much easier. For example, you can cut this out and create a function here and execute that here. For example, register form. All right, so you can execute a function, and this function can return uh, whatever you were returning before, like this. Okay, so down here, up here, let's create this function const register form, and you're going to return let's say this uh, uh, paragraph okay so previously we had this here but now we are putting that in this function this function is returning this one and this function is being executed here so this way also it works though the reason i like this is for sometimes this form can be quite big so instead of putting everything here in this return this is much more uh, easier to maintain when you have a lot of code all right so obviously we don't want the p tag instead we want a form right so let's create a form form get rid of the accent and you can see i'm not using written keyword or curly brace or anything because this is one element so if you have one element with arrow function you don't need written keyword or curly brace anything like that all right so in the form let's use on submit event handler on submit when the form is submitted what do we want to do we want to um, send the request to firebase so that firebase can send email to the user's email address right so all that will happen inside a function we can call that function handle submit and we will create this function very soon here let's just write here const handle submit we'll come back to it all right, so here inside this form, we're going to have an input field with the type of email. We will be taking the user's email address, class name. We can use bootstrap class name, form, control, and the value. The input field will have the controlled value. All right, so that means we can uh, create a state to store the user's email. For that we can bring in use state hook and let's create a state const email set email equals to use state and by default it will have no value okay now value we can bind it to the value in the state email now when user types something in this input field, we need to grab that value, whatever user is typing in, and put that in the state by the name of this email variable, right? And that will reflect here. So you can see here, that's how we are, our component's state is controlling the input field. Okay, so that means we need on change event handler as well, just like on submit, we use on change as well. So on change we get the event this is the event handler on change on submit these are event handlers so event you can write event or you can just write e so we're going to write an arrow function here okay so event we get the event and to get the user's input we can do event target value so set email we want to set the email whenever user type something in and that value is going to be event.target.value. 
I'm sure you already know this one. You can even console log and have a look. Console log. And then you can also use um, auto focus. So when you use the lens on this register page for the first time, this input field will be active by default. All right. So let's see when we type something in, let's see how this on change handle works, how we can see this uh, value in the console. Let's see. So you can see when I land in the space, by default, it is active because I used auto focus. Otherwise, it will be like this. But because we use auto focus, we have this active field here. Okay, so if I type something in, you can see here, it is printed in the console log. That's because I'm currently console logging. Now, instead of console log, let me set the state. Put this value in the email. So set email. All right. Then we're also going to add a button. So this button type is going to be submit. Okay, the class name is going to be uh, button, button raised. Because we are using bootstrap material, we can use these class names. That gives us nice material design look. You can see here, kind, that kind of button. All right, so let's give this button name, register. All right, and if you're curious, you can even have a look at the value, the user type, email. All right, so you can have a look at the state value email as the user types. Okay, you can see Ryan at gmail.com and so on. Perfect. Okay, get rid of that. So that means we have a beautiful form. We have on change handler that populates the user's email in the state. Now all we need to do is work on this handle submit so that we can make requests to Firebase so that Firebase can send an email to the user's email address. Let's do it in the next lecture.